It is the year 1936, the conflict is gathering in Europe, but this alternative history, Prussia and Germany has fired to form. France is a superpower controlling most of the world and containing a huge colonial empire. Then the USA is no more. The USA is split up into one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven countries, actually eight countries controlling what is actually being controlled by the US today. Well, it's time to restore German rule and perhaps to crush French dominance in Europe. We shall do so. Let's play on the regular as Prussia, on Iron Man mode and with historical air forces. We shall restore the German Reich and with Iron Man mode to show to you that there's nothing changed in this very game. We may fail, but if we fail, we fail in dignity and in honor. Prussia, Frederick's Nightmare, that is how the mod is called, by the way. Link to the mod will be down below in the description. Has for, let's, has Prussia's destiny been stolen from her? Well, I can even conclude that the answer, it hasn't been. It's just a temporary defeat, we are going to achieve full victory. Heil dem Siegerkranz, that's for sure. But there's a huge fox tree awaiting us. But we'll come and we'll see about how well the reunification of Germany goes. And let's see how long it's gonna take. Well, Prussia actually has a colonial empire, the very game says. Well, then we should show to the world that we are not for world domination, not unlike the French. We are not for colonial rule. I am free to release, at least to grant these nations some autonomy. We have Kenya here. And we have been selling no claims on this very country, so this has to stay on our command. But I'm gonna release Kenya to see. Let's go ahead and release Kenya as a very own puppet. There we go. This just demonstrates the willingness of the Prussian people to work together with the world to crush the French imperialists. Is there something better as Prussia to seek friendship with those who oppose the French imperialists? Of course, there is not. Let's go ahead and seek a friendship with the Russian Empire. Who else with Poland as well? Because why not? With the Austrians, maybe. And also with, uh, let's see, with authority with Saxony. There we go. Long live Prussia. Aldium Ganz. Look to that, the Austin Accords has been signed and Mexico granted independence to Texas. Now we have an independent Texas state being democratic, staying there perhaps as a guardian against the communist menace. Let's see, find out. Well, we have to say the French won't make bloody things easy for us. Now they made the Netherlands, they end Westphalia and Hessen and Baden join the Antoine. Well, we face a huge, huge problem here, especially since we are not going to count it and we can't stay cool in France. But, well, who said it can't be done? Who said Germany cannot be reunified? Tell me. Look at that. Prussia turned authoritarian again. We face a democratic world, but we will be victorious. I guarantee that. Again. Prussia and Russia. Christian monarchies. Strong states. Determined peoples, Prussia and Russia are meant to be allies. Prussia must join the Holy Alliance. Well, I did what I could. I increased my opinion as much as possible. Oh, uh, Russia is tolerating the conspiracy. Oh no. Oh no. If Russia turns communist, then we'll have an insanely huge problem. That will be shite if that happens, to be honest then we lose a possibly strong ally, so we have to get involved in the war with Austria as soon as possible. Their army is just increasing and becoming stronger by the day, as well as their military and industrial complex. So I can do nothing them to wait. Uh, either Russia will approve or they won't. The fate of our nation is uh, sealed to them, and I am not able to justify any war goals because I need them to be at 50 percent. Well, they, that's not problematic, goddammit. Let's see, will Russia grant us the yes? Yep, Russia joins the Holy Alliance. That is a great victory for us. That is a great victory indeed.
Russia, that sounds boring. How about Germany? Tell me, how about that? Hell yeah! Well, every step must be with a small one, every big move. Therefore, our goal right now is to secure Northern Germany and crush the communists. They have 1917 division, they should be nothing against our well equipped Prussian army. Just look at the equipment we have in storage, we're gonna crush them in a devastating quick move. We have the war goal arrival, we're gonna enact the war, we'll not stop our office plan, they're gonna execute it in an aggressive manner all of our armies, we're gonna declare war right now. Long live Prussia. We just call in Kilia and Serbia and the rest. Actually, the Russian Empire joined in as well. Well, the front line is just blinking green with our victories. Our army just marching in, in from the back lines. That's just amazing. You see, Russia is even helping us out quite nicely. Well, the help isn't really required, but still, thank you, Russia. Well, I like the fact that the entire front line is just flashing green with the victories of the Prussian army. Well, let's see, where are we? There is Hannover. Let's we have to crush into Hannover. Perhaps secure conquer their remaining provinces here and after that the devastating blow will be dealt to the Hanoverians. They lost already 49,000 troops but we lost quite a bit as well. Our last stance is there. Now there will be an offensive line drawn for that attack right now to crush the Hanoverian communists. And the position should come up right now resulting in absolute victory. That is great. We're gonna fully annex Hanover. Therefore we are one step closer to the forming of Germany. We gained strength, manpower, and more importantly, factories, which are certainly going to help us. By the way, Austria decided to go democratic. <laughs> Alright, well, that's okay. With the completion of securing Eastern Germany, we got a war goal to annex Saxony and Thuringia. I'd say let's bring that forward with annexing Thuringia. Let's say rest in peace, Thuringia, Cholvi, calling our allies, we're in a huge war. And we are being active on all fronts, let's slow down this kid actually, and connect the war economy. Their economy is actually quite nice considering they have a 70 to 18 civilian factories. If we get them under our command, we'll get all their factories and that will be just great, getting all of these factories under our command. Well, that's a dream. The Battle of Air Force, we're attacking, there's just one tiny division defending it. By the way, I can't feel the just mounting individuals because there is a special force cap right now. So that's well might because we were exploiting that really. There you go, we captured Air Force, now Thuringia has capitulated. It shouldn't history come up. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, well, what's going on here? Yes, they did surrender. Game, are you alright? Oh, there we go. It just took some time, but this will come up. Alright. Otherwise, it will result in a full activation, and we'll get nice tungsten, chromium, and steel, which we desperately need. A straight Prussia. We also got the equipment. Amazing! This is a huge victory for the goal of reunifying Johnny. We have 52 military and 51 civilian factories. Actually, more than France has military rights. We are speeding up our progress of militarization. That is for sure, that is guaranteed. We will be speed up here as well. It's plus 100%. Next thing will be we are gonna we have a war goal already against Saxony. But this will result us fighting against the Austrians. Against the Austrians. Well, you see, they have land uh, fought there in Lower Silesia, but with the help of our Russian friends, the Austrians will be crushed for once and for all. Thing is, do I want to get them involved, the Russians? Um, probably, we need them. We need them. They should not interfere. But before we do so, I want to go ahead and get close on the Bavarian territory. Let's go ahead and get the secure southern Germany war goal. Currently, Germany is just dominated by factions, except Baden Württemberg, they are still independent, but we are gonna change that quite soon. Ladies and gentlemen, here we stand now, as Prussia, we're going to form the Kaisertum Poison, but we aren't done yet. Our army, we are depleted of manpower, and our army is nearly 1 million strong. Our armed forces are even 1 million strong. 
Well, I want to use this very opportunity and to declare war on the Austrians. <coughs> There's no risk of other nations being involved. We'll fight the Austrians by ourselves and ashore go forward and declare war on my own on the Austrian Empire because I have the feeling that they are inferior to us. They have 32 to 60 divisions while we have 80 and 1. I think we are going to win this war and reclaim and reform the German Reich. The German Kaiserreich it will be. Hell yeah. Well, we have no war going yet, but that's not a problem. Well, I could have uh, created one for that very guy. I'm just gonna spirit of pet him to Munich. We won't attack anyways. I'm still. Uh, let's finish until our forts are finished somewhere in the in this very region. After they are, we're gonna declare war on the. Austrians. Let's see, who can we get? We're gonna save because we have to enact health requirement if we go to war against the Austrians. I don't know why we are still suffering from the economic crisis though, but that will vanish uh, at one point. I'm sure we have enough war support and we have enough stability in our country and certainly we have enough equipment to support this very major offensive. We, our arm is one million strong. So I think the victory is imminent, it's gonna be ours. We declared the Kaiser Tomb of Prussia, we certainly didn't get any, should have got any events. But that may pop quite soon, or not. And now I see you when the war starts, which we will win, sure. Here we are back with a Prussian army of nearly one million men ready to strike against the Austrians. And the Danube Pact will be no more, I guarantee that to you. Let's go ahead and declare war on Bavaria with the goal of annexing our coast. Actually, let's just do it on Saxony. Annex, it says there. Declare war. Well, we declare war on Saxony. Look at that. That's the longest bit of the game. Now, counties are being involved. Well, what do you think? I'm gonna call in everyone. Everyone has been called in. Now it's time to draw up some battle plans. The first army was standing just there. The first army will attack them from this very front line into Vienna and Austria. Uh, Bavaria should join. I'm just gonna. Won't they join? Whatever. And this army, the Army of Freedom in other names, will attack from the Polish front as well into the inner part of Austria. They went like there. And this army of 13 men is gonna attack the Austrians from the Russian border region. So we have our troops everywhere across the empire spread out. Our troops are ready. Our army will execute in an aggressive manner. Finland actually joined the war as well. And just look to that how the front line is blinking them. That's that's a nice feeling, certainly. Finland joins the Anton, Saxony calls in Bavaria. Oh, let's, let's just see our our army is advancing into Austria. The Austrians lost Silesia already. There's a major offense by the Serbian army. Uh, the Austrians are fighting on one, two, three, four fronts. Four fronts. Well, Austria, I wish you my best wishes in this war, which I'm sure you are not going to win in the slightest. Well, I have to enact service by requirement, which I did. Now you see our troops just advancing into the Austrian lands. Our army there got a bit messed up. Let's uh, change, let's fix that problem. Assigning them the broader front line and attacking them into these very colonies. There we go. This is gonna be a victorious campaign. I hope I'm gonna uh, get most of the war score, most of the contribution to the war score as well. Well, the Russians are doing much. Perhaps they don't want to give up their gains so easily. It seems like they won't. Well, there are Russian troops everywhere crawling across the lines. Well, I mean, we are also attacking them from the interior. Keeping that in mind. We should certainly get most of the war score, I think, under for my estimations, but whatever. Hey. Let's capture Vienna. You never know the air works and Saxony did already surrender. Then we have the 30 division cell is gonna advance from this line into the heart of Austria. Come on. Uh, I don't like that Russia will get more land than I do. We have 43%, really. 42 even just. I just like that. They get lost because of bombing. Hell yeah, bombing gives them so much. I. 
you see just our army attack. I'm gonna just launch a primitive attack. There we go, a primitive attack. Which is actually working quite well, as you can see. Austria has surrendered and they are taking some territories there. Well, I mean, I'm gonna grant that to them. I'm gonna first take the German core states. There we go, pass sometimes. I don't know why they decided to take this territory. Let's take Tyrol and perhaps also offer Austria, perhaps South Tyrol as well, because they are German people. Upper Austria as well. Let's take Veneto for the resources. And Upper Austria. I'm gonna take. I can't take more. And return. Pass some time. So later take Moravia. I'll take Saxony and Sol Silesia. So they didn't land. Okay, that looks ugly. And if they didn't land, then I'll take. Well, what is left? Perhaps Krakow. I can't. So pass. Yes, I'll take Krakow, whatever. Yeah, this is border going at its finest, but it could be worse, I guess. Now let's take these two provinces and Zalauzi and Zaychelis and Bailodina. I won't take. Let's really go to the brave Serbians. Serbians, well done. Well, this is how uh, Prussia looks like after the war. We took 16 states, the rising up to 23. We have, I mean, uh, our military capacity just doubled, and you know what that's gonna mean? That's gonna mean the annihilation, the annihilation of the French. Soon, soon it will come, and the Entente will be no more. I am deeply convinced that we are more than ready to strike against the Entente. The Entente, they may seem like a superpower, but France is a former shadow of itself. If you take into consideration, well, they may have more troops than we do, which I actually doubt as well. Because we have more military factories than they do. France is a huge empire spread out across the globe. For example, they have many divisions guarding Assyria and Kenya. So I think thanks. And they are also fighting the Chinese. So they are already fighting a huge country there. They are involved in many wars, the Antoine. I think they. Or well, the Antoine is even fighting the. Oh no, never mind. They are not fighting the US. I think if if they fight us, then they are gonna be safe for Duke. So I'm gonna go ahead. Let's see. Our let's first regroup our air force into one province. We have 400 points there. Plus I have well, plenty in reserve. I'm gonna deploy all of them right there and right now. I'll get air supremacy in let's say Western Germany. Air supremacy Western Germany. And I'm gonna issue a declaration of war against Hesse. I know, I'll... Oh wait, so the US is actually a part of the Entente. What just happened there? Well, um, I don't mind. I'm just gonna go ahead and take them by force. Declare war, call allies. There we go. The begin of the first world war pass in this very instance. We have up to 4 million affiliate troops against the United troops of them and, well, are they ready? What do you think? They most likely shouldn't be ready. The French, they signed their own death testimony. I don't know why I can't assign them to my front, anyways, go to this front and directly attack to Paris in an aggressive manner. I'm gonna accept Spanish help, gladly. Now, while the war is ongoing, the Russian troops should help us with the other French divisions. Poland has joined our noble and other wing. Venezuela, I am gonna accept any help. Any help is greatly appreciated. The Dutch, they're also in Anton. No, it's... Uh, yeah. A kind of a new world war. Kind of a new world war. I'm gonna finish after France has fallen because that would be just uh, taking a long time. Oh, China joined the Holy Alliance. Well, now we'll be fighting Japan as well. Oh, I'm not going to join it. Well, I'll hope to get Russian aid in this in these sectors. A fascist coup in Nepal. I just speed up the game. We just encircled some French divisions there. That is just amazing. We got six French divisions. We captured Frankfurt. And Venezuelan divisions also arrived. These 13, they aren't doing anything. 
I think the AI cannot manage the battle plans that well at this very moment. Let's do it by yourself. Then the 74 divisions are assigned, they are gonna attack them. And this one division will surrender as well. There we go, Russian troops are arriving to the front. Once our help in the war efforts. Well, Kenya has capitulated. Go Kenya. Let's say, well done. France, well done. Catching that they may send this troop to the uh, home front. But the Prussian army is advancing. Suffering some casualties, but advancing. But advancing. Our oh, Tsar Nicholas II just got killed and well, they joined the Socialist Alliance. What just happened there? That meant the withdrawal of the Russian troops. I'm gonna uh, ask for access, perhaps offer them access as well. They joined the Socialist Alliance. Well, we got this, we got this failure. Our army is advancing. We really do not meet that much resistance from the French. Uh, we are a Socialist Alliance, Soviet Russia and Mexico. Well, the rest of the countries are, no, are not in any faction. Well, we have to make the Americans surrender as well, and that won't work because well, I mean, why did they even join the Anton in the first instance? That just made made things really more complicated. How many ninety thousand losses? I'm not scaring away by any losses. I'm gonna achieve victory by any means possible. The Dutch. When should the Dutch surrender? The Dutch are actually uh, eighty-four percent loss capitulation. After we capture Rotterdam, the Dutch should be doomed. In other words. We breached the line here in hand already. Let's uh, march down to Paris. I'd, I'd suggest let's just down. Let's march down to Paris. You see the French front line at the home just collapsed. Our infantry is just like the Germans, just crushing through the Ardennes. The French are trying desperately to uh, fill in the gaps they got in the front line. I'm gonna use the momentum. The Dutch have surrendered, giving us. An insane amount of, of equipment, for instance. Our army is closing into Paris. The French are just uh, now. Fra Paris has fallen. Paris has fallen. The Democrats got this failure. Let's just crush this uh, remnant of Dutch troops there. The French are completely uh, overwhelmed by our force. Well, the Socialist Alliance should be in war. I mean. Doesn't Russia want to like call in his allies? Perhaps not. I can send in attaché. Yeah, to Soviet Russia. Send in military attaché. Uh, the war against France should be just won. Without a doubt, we should have won it. Let's see. France is 51% uh, towards capitulation. We captured Bitburg. Our army is just devastating. Their territory. Let's make a new army offensive line. There we go. Attack aggressively. There's some troops there capturing Bordeaux. Really sweet. No, no, no. Just why? What's happening? Whatever. What? Okay, the US declared war on Cuba. Well, if the Americans wouldn't have been in the Entente, this war actually would have been over after the surrender of France. But how things are, the Americans decided to be in the Entente, so this war won't be over then. Now, as you see, the Prussians devastating the French, completely devastating them. Just look to that. Just marching like if there are like if there's nothing. Just isn't that amazing? But I won't make hold until I form the nation of Germany. Well, the French, they are 85% was capitulation. The Indian Republic joined the Imperial Alliance. They declared war on Colombia. Well, now you see things are not really looking that good for the French. Or they're just going to Marseille. Some armies are going to capture. I mean, where is the, the French army? I think there is nothing left of the French army. But I would have thought that uh, a small Prussia would have. We would be able to crush France that easily, like apparently we are. We are able just to overwhelm them. There we go, we captured uh, Marseille as well. The French are 99% uh, towards capitulation. Just some more provinces, then they will surrender. Some more provinces, and then they will surrender. 
they are not willing to give up breast, that is uh, clearly visible. I'm still waiting for the, for the capitulation of French, and then I think we can call Germany. Well, not restored, I'm gonna just take Baden and build them back down, we can call them restored. But, you see our army? The France is capitulated! France is capitulated! If that's not a huge victory, I don't know what to say anymore. Hell yeah, that is how things should have been. Yes. And actually, it seems like the Americans, they made surrender as well. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see. So, after we successfully took out the Entente in Europe and these two minor German nations here, namely Württemberg and Baden, I am now on the way to reunify Germany. Well, the a unified German state never existed in this history timeline, but now it will exist for the first time. A. Elsmith may win the presidency and may surrender, we don't care. We care about this, the unification of Germany. Unification of Germany. In great celebrations, the Prussian state today ceased to exist, instead making place for a new and reformed Germany, with Wilhelm III as its head of state and its capital in Berlin. The formation of a German state on the mind of many dreamers since at least the 1840s had, well, uh, look, actually a hundred days after the dreams that had been formed, had been blocked by careful French and Austrian diplomatic maneuvering to this day. But today, there's no doubt that Prussia, to that, no, no, that Germany, Deutschland, stands victorious. Three, hurrahs for Germany. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah!